Hello, YouTube. Uh, this is Corey Newman. Today I want to talk about uh, the War of 1812 to 1814 in New York Harbor and Sandy Hook Bay. I uh, did a little research and I want to read off some of my notes. Hopefully you'll learn something. So please, uh, if you like my video, hit like. Subscribe, it real, would really help me out. All right. The War of 1812. President James Madison had asserted in his war message to Congress on June 1st, 1812, to the most insulting pretensions that have added the most lawless proceedings in our very harbors. New Yorkers knew this all too well. During 1811, the frigate HMS Guerriere and other Royal Navy vessels had plied the waters off Sandy Hook, looking for Napoleonic privateers who were raiding British cargo ships, but also taking seamen and passengers off American vessels entering and exiting New York. The War of 1812 began on June 12, 1812, a second war with Br the British began, pending the construction of fortifications in the Highlands and on the Hook. A flotilla of gunboats was sent to the Hook to protect the New York Harbor's entrance. Curtailing American overseas commerce was a key British strategy for ruining the enemy's economy and bringing him to terms. And from the onset of war, England brought its vastly superior neighbor, navy to bear against American shipping, as Manhattan merchants had feared. By early July 1812, a squadron of six British warships, HMS Guerriere, Africa, Shannon, Sparta, Belvedere, and Areolis, sailed with impunity off Sandy Hook, and the south shore of Long Island. Within three weeks, they have seized 15 American cargo vessels, among them four schooners and ships that called New York their home port. By then, the 40-gun uh, Acasta, the 74-gun Valiant, and four other warships were already in place off the hook to cut New York's lifeline of trade. Captain Lloyd of HMS... Uh, of the HMS Plant, Plant a Jet made a specialty of this, picking up fishing smacks and small boats off Sandy Hook and selling them back to their owners for $100 or $200. In short, the blockade of, Americans, blockade of America worked at cross-purposes with the war effort on the continent, and the pragmatic attraction of using American wheat flour, pork, and beef to feed redcoats in Spain produced a highly porous blockade. British consuls routinely signaled licenses that allowed American ship captains to sail without molestation to ports where their trade would aid the English war effort. Thus, during the, war of, during the summer of 1812, when the Guerrier and other frigates were seizing American vessels off Sandy Hook, Dozens of others were arriving safely at their Manhattan berths. With British ships plying the waters off Sandy Hook and Long Island, New Yorkers took the threat of attack very seriously. By early 1813, 3,500 New York and New Jersey militia men and U.S. Army troops guarded the city. Most of them posted at the uh, most of them posted to harbor forts. During the course of the war, New Jersey militiamen were called out for short duty stints, averaging 90 days. They initially reported to Paulus Hook, modern-day Jersey City, where they were equipped and organized into units and then assigned to posts from New York City, Harlem, Stat and Staten Island to the highlands of Navasink and Sandy Hook, the gateways to New York Harbor. A fort was built on Sandy Hook by the lighthouse and manned by federal volunteers 
known as Sea Fencibles, who were backed up by Jersey militiamen. One of the group of volunteers did render heroic service, mobilized in the fall of 1812. The Sea Fencibles were men to serve both on land and at sea as a marine militia. Weapons of the Sea Fencibles were the musket, the boarding pike, and most importantly, the 45-foot gunboat armed with one or two cannons. Essentially a long rowboat propelled by oars or by sail, it could carry about three dozen armed men. From the base at Spermacetti Cove, within the arms of Sandy Hook, Jacob Lewis, the Jacob Lewis flotilla of 31 gunboats, moved swiftly through, through the port waters. New Jersey Governor Aaron Ogden continued to call out more militiamen in November 1812, and by the end of that year, Jersey Blues were stationed at Fort Richmond on Staten Island, as well as the Highlands. <clears throat> During the War of 1812, the United States military, to prevent His Majesty's fleet from occupying sheltered anchorages in Sandy Hook and Raritan Bays, rushed troops to Sandy Hook. Fortifications were erected and cannons in place, thus preventing sea British sea power from again using Sandy Hook as an anchorage and possibly staging area for an attack on New York City, such as, such as had succeeded more than one-third of a century before. In the spring of 1813, after completing installation on the Highlands, 280 workmen began erecting fortifications at the Huck. <coughs> the fort was equipped with several 32-pound cannons and some 800 troops of the New Jersey Blues encamped at the Highlands. Barracks and blockhouses were constructed. Highlands men were included and brought in especially for this task. Additional works were erected on Sandy Hook. Governor Tompkins reported to the legislature on March 13, 1813 that work had also begun on Sandy Hook. Two or three cannons were located at the lighthouse, primarily as signal guns, in the event of an enemy approach to fend off small raiding parties from the blockading squadron. But the fortifications were generally insignificant. A large fort on Telegraph Hill and Nevisink Lighthouse, some three miles from the lighthouse, <coughs> was in direct communication with Signal Hill on Staten Island. By the end of March 1813, the Telegraph Hill fort was manned by five companies of artillery with 32 pounders and three companies of infantry. On April 1st, 1813, Colonel Swift arrived in New York from the Carolinas and on April 6th reported to Brigadier General George Izzard, who commanded the United States forces in New York City. The fort at Sandy Hook was located half a mile north of where Sandy Hook Lighthouse stands. One in every seven men were chosen, with most being sent to Sandy Hook, much as during the Revolution. General Abraham Godwin of Patterson personally marched a group of volunteers to the shore to dig trenches and other fortifications. Forts of stone and sand were constructed by militia up and down the Atlantic seaboard, including Summers Point, commanding the entrance to Great Egg Harbor and Fort Gates at San Sandy Hook. <coughs> <coughs> the quality of men, guns, and ammunition was said to be poor during the war. For example, the 1st Regiment of the Monmouth County Brigade had guns of different sizes and calibers, and most of them were not fit for actual service. Reports from militia units 
from Bergen County to Cape May indicated problems of poor equipment, no equipment, inadequate ammunition, and or lack of artillery. Because of the danger of, of invasion, New Jersey drafted some of the militia from the Jersey Shore to man the fortifications at Sandy Hook. Those who did not want to serve joined together and hired a substitute for $50. This proved a convenient way of avoiding militia duty. Those who did not evade militia service found Sandy Hook the most inhospitable sand heap that was ever trod upon by the foot of man, and they survived upon meals of horse meat and gunboat turkey, salted pork. Uh, on May 11, 1813, 200 troops of the New Jersey militia were brought in to bolster, bolster the fort at Telegraph Hill in Highlands. For two years, Lewis and his men played cat and mouse with the British. In late March 1813, Admiral Sir John Borlase Warren, Commander-in-Chief of the British Forces in North American Waters, announced to the Admiralty his intention of seizing Sandy Hook and making it a base for British depredations on American shipping into and out of New York. Such a move would effectively make the British blockade of the Narrows airtight and afford a launching point for further operations. Lewis and other New Yorkers sensed what was coming. The enemy at the hook, enemy are at the hook, was the universal cry of the city, he wrote to the Navy Secretary William Jones in May 1813. On April 15, 1813, Swift began to repair all the ports in the harbor <clears throat> and to erect blockhouses at Dennis Hill in New Ultrich in the rear of Hendricks Reef at Jamaica Bay on Long Island, Princess Bay on Staten Island, and Sandy Hook, New Jersey, to deter raiding parties from Admiral Warren's blockading squadron off Sandy Hook. The construction of these blockhouses was undertaken by a very industrious and intelligent local mechanic by the name of Cropsby, who resided in New Ulrich. These blockhouses were armed with wall pieces uh, from West Point and manned by detachments from General John Swarthout's brigade of New Jersey militia based at Perth Amboy. In addition, Captain Jacob Lewis, commanding the naval forces in the lower harbor, had gunboats and barges to patrol the waters inside Sandy Hook and to interdict, interdict the intercourse between spies in the city and Admiral Warren's flagship, HMS Ramellas. In May 1830, Seven boatloads of British sailors from the blockading warships tried to land on the Huck, relying on the dead of night and muffled oars to surprise the fencibles stationed there. They were scared off when the aroused sentries started firing on them. The raid may have been a less concerted invasion than a ploy by the timorous Warren to appease an impatient admiralty. <coughs> Nonetheless, the presence of the fencibles had deterred a British assault on the city's threshold. <laughs> By May 25th, the Swift, Swift had temporary defenses reasonably well in hand for the protection of the city. In addition to the increased garrison on Staten Island, Staten Island works. Some 89 additional pieces of artillery were moved to the island. The British blockade of the southern entrance intensified at the end of May 1813. Barges from the frigate HMS Ceteria frequently chased small vessels in the vicinity of Rockaway. The blockade of the southern entrance of New York Harbor was so strict that by autumn 1813, that part of the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment was sent down to reinforce the defenses on the hook. 
Next, Lewis took the war to the British on the 4th of July, 1813. His men disguised a pilot boat, the Yankee, as a fishing smack. Three men poised as fishermen on deck. Forty-three others armed with muskets hid on, hid on the foredeck and in the cabins, sailing off the huck. The Yankee soon lured its target, the British sloop of war Eagle, which had been seizing fishing boats and burning vessels at will. As the British sloop drew alongside, the principals jumped from their cover and opened fire, killing a master's mate and midshipman and capturing 11 Royal Marines. Jubilant spectators lined the Whitehall dock at Manhattan's tip as the sea principals delivered the Eagle and its crew at the people of New York City as an Independence Day gift. Two months later, Lewis took 26 gunboats up the East River and through Hell's Gate to harass a British frigate and schooner that were seizing vessels and landing sailors near near Rye to sheep to steal sheep. <clears throat> In July 1813, Judge John S. Foreman of Monmouth County recalled that a British brig chased two coasters returning to New York City to Barnegat Bay. The two coasters tried to make it into the Squan Inlet with a British brig in hot pursuit. While they, they outran the brig, the Jersey coasters ran aground in the inlet. The crews managed to escape in small boats to safety on the shore. Further up the coast, a major incident took place in November 1813 when the 74-gun planted jet drove the American schooner Sparrow aground at Long Branch. Four boats from the planted jet with 100 men followed the Sparrow and took possession of the grounded vessel. Before they could refloat the schooner, word reached the American gunboat flotilla at Spermacetti Cove, six miles away of what had happened, and several of the best runners were sent to hold off the British boarding party. A dozen men reached the vessel and opened fire on the British. They retreated in as much a hurry and confusion as to leave several of their cartouche boxes with cartridges and omit and omit to set fire to the schooner. <coughs> Soon additional troops from the gunboats and a volunteer force volunteer force of fifty local men arrived. As they had prepared to board the schooner, the planted jet approached within a quarter mile of the grinded vessel and opened fire. With no cover available, the Americans were forced to lie prostrate on the beach. Fire from the British war warship destroyed the schooner, but the Americans were able to save the cargo. One American was killed and 30 wounded in the bombardment. On May 23, 1814, the British frigate Neiman captured four American schooners out of Little Egg Harbor in southern New Jersey. The British frigate only had one, one of several English warships that cruised off the New Jersey coast from Sandy Hook to Maurice River during the War of 1812. They seized ships entering or leaving New York, Philadelphia, and ports along the Jersey coast. After late August 1814, all military equipment stored at Newark was moved to Paulus Hook, which was then occupied by 1,200 men under the command of Colonel John Freelingheisen. Brigadier General William Col Colfax formed a brigade and moved it to Sandy Hook and then established an elaborate telegraph signaling system involving cannon fire and lowering and hoisting of large black and white balls on masts sighted atop the highlands to convey coded information on the movements of the enemy to Signal Hill on Staten Island and thence to Governor's Island on in or Brooklyn or the Brooklyn Navy Yard in fifteen minutes. 
Local tradition holds that during the War of 1812, a British ship shelled the grounds of Portland Place in Middletown, New Jersey. The reason this occurred is unclear. Richard Hartshorn obtained a 21-year lease for Sandy Hook in 1677 from Philip Carteret, governor of the Providence of New Jersey. That spit of land forming the south side <coughs> of the entrance to New York Harbor figured prominently in the affairs of the Hartshorn family for more than three centuries. Before his lease expired, Richard Hartshorn was able to attain a deed on November 2nd, 1692 for the hook from the proprietors of the Providence of East Jersey. The title remained with the descendants until December, until, until 1817 when the United States of America purchased it from his great-grandson, also named Richard, for $20,000. The lighthouse and its four-acre parcel were were ceded in 1790 to the federal government by the state of New York and New Jersey. Second, that portion of the hook tip north and east, north of an east-west line through the lighthouse containing 175 acres was acquired by deed dated February 26, 1806 and a third deed uh, for the rest of the hook on June 17, 1817, Richard Hartshorn and his wife deeded the remaining 1,230 acres of Sandy Hook property to the government. In 1821, Richard Hartshorn conveyed 229 acres of the working farm portion of, of the Portland tract to his son Robert Hartshorn. The remaining 535 acres were sharply shared equally by the son and his three unmarried sisters after Richard's death in 1831. <coughs> Robert obtained sole ownership of Portland Place in 1835 when he bought out his sister's interests. And so that is my history of the War of 1812 and the Hartshorn family and with ending with the selling of Sandy Hook shortly after the war uh, in 1817 from the Hartshorn family. And uh, uh, Sandy Hook has been in government, in the uh, pro uh, ownership of the government since then. Uh, to this day, whether the military, army, or the National Park Service since 1975. So that is my history of the War of 1812 in Sandy Hook Bay. All right? Like and subscribe and uh, share this video. Thank you. Bye.